hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king and today i'm gonna be giving you part four of what if naruto took his training seriously remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and also go ahead and check out the new episode of what if naruto created his own village that i posted so go ahead and enjoy that and over at Anime King 2 tonight, I'm going to be posting a new episode of What If Naruto Had The Sharingan and The Byakugan Mix. So stay in tune for that and enjoy guys. And I'm also going to be posting a new episode of What If Naruto Was Neglected By His Family. So stay in tune for that as well. And remember, if you're new and you enjoy the videos on both channels, Anime King and Anime King 2, Go ahead and click that red subscribe button and join Anime King and Anime King 2. I'll be leaving a link in top of the description for Anime King 2 guys for you guys to check it out. And thank you all for your help and your support. And yeah, without further ado, let's begin this new episode, shall we? So, the last time we left off, Naruto faced off against Kiba in the preliminaries. And when Naruto showed his power, Kiba was no match for him. As the rest of the preliminaries went on, and it came to an end as Saratobi explained the rules as Naruto was happy to see the new girl that he met again. But with that Naruto headed off as Ebisu Sensei was his trainer as he brought Naruto to the hot spring to walk on water which Naruto easily performed. It was then that Ebisu saw Jiraiya peeping on a few girls but he didn't know that it was Jiraiya as he went to attack Jiraiya who knocked him out. After he knocked out Naruto Sensei, Naruto cursed at Jiraiya as Naruto then told Jiraiya his name as Jiraiya was surprised. Unknown to Naruto, Kushina, his mother was still alive as she was in a coma as she woke up the moment Jiraiya told Naruto that his mother is in a coma as Naruto couldn't believe what he was hearing. Kushina immediately went to Saratobi's office after regaining her strength and everything as Saratobi informed her about what happened so far with Naruto as she immediately rushed to find Naruto. Jiraiya also had a summoning contract for the dragons that belonged to Uzumaki as he gave it to Naruto who signed the dragon summoning contract as a dragon then explained things about the dragon contract. Kushina then arrived as they spent two hours as she catch up with her son and hugged him so much happy to see him again as the giant dragon then vanished leaving behind a small dragon to stay with Naruto. About Shizuka is fox size. Shizuka also has four tails at the moment as she is getting stronger. Kushina then told Jiraiya that she would take over Naruto's training as Jiraiya gave her two scrolls from Minato, two of Minato's best jutsus to teach Naruto as she happily accepted. As Kushina then told Naruto that she is going to teach him about his two bloodlines making Naruto surprised that he had two bloodlines. So yeah guys that was basically the last part we left off. You guys can switch across the place and check it out for yourself. So let's start this new episode. What the hell? I have two bloodlines? Said Naruto. Kushina nodded. Yep. Mine and your father she said. What's my father like? What is this Keke Genkai and who is he? Naruto asks in one breath as Kushina sighed. Until you become Chunin, all I can tell you is that your father was a great, strong mankind, a hero of Konoha. In fact, you would look just like him, she said as she thought about Minato. I see. They now just become stronger for you to tell me about him, Naruto said as Kushina smiled as she ruffled Naruto's hair. Now, on to the bloodline. Your bloodline allows you to control lightning itself and by also mixing the pure lightning with water, chakra and wind, you can create the Uzumaki bloodline storm style, Kushina explained. Let me demonstrate, she said, as she raised her hand as the once clear blue sky start to turn dark with a lot of clouds as rain start to fall and the breeze start to hollow as a lightning bolt then came down and struck Kushina's hand as the lightning covered her body. Mom! Naruto cried out, thinking that the lightning bolt had harmed her. 
Naruto then looked confused as the mother just showed him a warm smile as she then went through hand sign. She then thrust her arms out in front of her as she then called her jutsu. Storm style, lightning cloud wave, she said. A large wave of electricity in the form of a spider web was released from her hands, destroying everything in front of her. The stormy skies then calm and the place became cool again. As Naruto looked at the destruction that his mother caused with one simple jutsu like that. As everything was fried to a crisps, as Naruto couldn't believe the power. That was awesome, Naruto cried out. Thank you, Naruto, said Kushina. Alright, now you try, she said, as she gestured for him to start his control over lightning. Now, to harness lightning, you must clear your mind of all thought and focus and predict the lightning. And when you consume that static energy inside your body, let it loose and it will destroy anything in your path. But the first thing is a change, the weather condition, as Naruto listened on every word his mother told him. Alright, let's do this, Naruto shouted as he brought his hand together in the tiger hand sign and started a constant streak on his chakra. His chakra then swirled around him, kicking up dirt and rock into the ear, as he then charged all of it into his hand and shot his hand up into the ear, as his chakra flies straight up into the sky, as Kushina was surprised how much chakra her son has as it shoots into the atmosphere, as dark grey clouds then appear above the boat of them, as a storm then rolled in, as the winds were blowing violently and ripping through the rocks, as the wind could cut even your skin, but the both of them were surrounded by chakra, as the rain hit the ground with enough force that it could smash small pebbles, as a thunder boat then hit the ground. Kushina chuckled, wow, you are powerful, she said. Now, for step two, controlling the lightning bolt, she said. What? Naruto said. Already? Naruto asked. But should we? No but, sons. You're Uzumaki and Uzumaki learn fast. Now, in order to control the lightning, you must coat your body with chakra to protect it from the static that is charged with the lightning. Now then, when you do that, your body becomes a human lightning rod and the lightning will strike your body. And after the lightning strike you, use your chakra to control it around you and add your elements towards it to create new sorts of jutsu with the lightning, she said. As Naruto smiled, as he slammed his hand together, let's try, he said. As a few seconds later, the lightning bolt hit him, as lightning was cackling off of his entire body, with chakra swirling around him, making him look dangerous, as he raised his hand. Now, as he released a bolt of lightning, as it destroyed everything in its path, as Naruto slammed it into a boulder, disintegrating the boulder and the trees surrounding them, as Kushina's eyes went wide. As Naruto started to fall, but Kushina caught him with incredible speed, as she hold her son. Your first try. You're so amazing, she said. Yeah, I guess I... But Naruto never got to finish his sentence, as he passed out. As Kushina then picked him up and headed towards the Hokage's tower, Kushina then paused as she felt like she forgot something. As she then turned to see Kayashi, Naruto's new dragon friend, ran up to her. You nearly killed me, you sadistic Uzumaki. If I hadn't taken cover in the river, I could have died, the red dragon said. As Kayashi then made fire came over his body as the water on him evaporated. As he then shook himself off, as he jumped on Kushina's shoulder. Sorry. Um, some lightning jutsus got out of hand. I'll make it up to you with some ramen, said Kushina. Ramen? What is that? Kushina nearly fell over and dropped Naruto as she looked at the young dragon like she saw a ghost. Don't tell me, you never had ramen? Damn it, you have never lived, she said. Alright, I will make sure your world changed from this day, she said the smile on her face. As Kayashi shook his head. As Kushina started to calm down, I will make you taste ramen, Kayashi, and from this day on, that will become your new favorite meal, she said. Time skip. At the Hokage's tower, Kushina entered Sarutobi's office as he was still doing the paperwork. 
As Saratobi looked up, Ah, Kushina, you're back. Guessing from the wake here, the unconscious Naruto and the little dragon on your shoulder, Naruto has been successful with his bloodline and the summoning. Of course, he's my son, said Kushina. Kushina, you've been out for a while, but even though I still think that your skills are spectacular as they were before you entered a coma, now then, I have one thing to ask of you, Saratobi said, as Kushina tilted her head to the side as she was confused. Would you like to rejoin Konoha ranks as a Jonin? Saratobi said, as Kushina thought about it and then shrugged. Why not? It will be fun to be a ninja again, she answered. Saratobi then opened the jaw, as I Ichi Ichi book was there. Oops, wrong jar. You won't tell anyone, right? He said. Kushina simple chuckle as she nodded. Your secret is safe with me, she said, as he pulled another jaw and took out a Konoha headband with a red cloth on it instead of the normal blue. Kushina accepted it as she tied it around her left arm. Just then, Uncle walked into the office. Hey, Hokage, can I get the day? Uncle paused as she saw Kushina. As Uncle then rubbed her eyes and pinched herself to see if she was dreaming, but she felt pain when she pinched herself, so it wasn't a dream. As a big smile then came on Uncle's face, Kushina, Uncle yelled. Kushina then raised her hands in surprise, causing Kayashi to fall off her shoulder and Naruto fall as well. Uncle, as the both of them grabbed each other and gave each other a big tight hug. How have you been, uncle? I mean, I have been in a coma for 13 years, Kushina said, as uncle chuckled. I am a Jonin, and I am judging the second part of the Chunin exams, and your kid passed with flying colors. Did the kid show you his pet fox yet? It is awesome. It can make fire and all kinds of stuff. At that moment, Naruto woke up, as he then yawned. As he looked around, he is in Saratobi's office as Kayashi was on the ground, glaring at Kushina for making him fall, as Naruto then saw the snake lady. Good, you're up, said Kushina. Let's go to your apartment. I want to see your pet fox that has special powers, she said. Naruto scratched his head as he glared at Anko, as Anko scratched the back of her head with a smile. Sure, mom, let's go, as he was about to leave when Anko stopped them. One more thing, Naruto, today is Konoha Spring Festival. Who's your date? And Kushina, are you coming? Naruto shook his head as Kushina nodded. As she spoke first, Of course, Uncle, I will never miss a night to beat you in a drinking contest. What about you, Uncle asked as she looked at Naruto. I have someone in mind, he said. As the dragon then climbed on top of Naruto's head as they headed off. At Naruto's apartment, Naruto and Kushina were jumping on top of the rooftops as they landed down in front of Naruto's apartment with his mother right behind him. As they then climbed the steps to the top floor of the building and headed to the last door. As Naruto then unlocked the door and they entered. As Kushina was at awe, Naruto's apartment was actually clean. Seeing that he had that whole epiphany and decided to change, his apartment was spotless. The living room had a nice comfortable couch, a television and a small table. And next to that was a kitchen with all of the kitchen equipment and a bathroom. Whoa, Naruto, for a boy, living by yourself for 13 years, you have done pretty good on your own. But I think you should move out of here and come live with me at my house. As Naruto turned at his mother and looked at her. Really? You want me to live with you? Naruto asked. You're my son. Of course I want you to live with me, she said. As tears immediately came at Naruto's eyes as he grabbed his mother and hugged her. Thank you, mom, he said. You're my son. I will do anything for you, she said, as she hugged him back. As she rubbed his back as he cried, tears of joy. After a few minutes, Naruto finally calmed down. Okay, Naruto, where is this Shizuka I've been hearing about? As Naruto then whistled, as he then heard something rushing towards him, as Kushina hurt as well, as Naruto was tackled down to the ground, by a black blur as Kushina looked down at a small fox to see the green slitted eyes and the four tails. Shizuka then sniffed Kushina as she then smiled and nuzzled her leg. Kushina smiled as she petted the young fox 
but she was still shocked about the four tails. Kayashi then jumped down to the floor as the both of them glared at each other, red slitted eyes versus green slitted eyes. As Kayashi started to talk to Shizuka in animal language, after a while, Kayashi then smiled. Well, she's okay with me, Kayashi said. As the both of them went into the living room and started to talk, I am going to go pack now, Naruto informed his mother. Naruto then went to his room as he got a duffel bag and packed all of the important things. As he then came back out to the living room, Alright, I'm ready to go, mom, he said, as Kushina got up off the couch. As Kayashi then went on Naruto's head, as Shizuka went on Kushina's head. A few minutes later, the two arrived at the Uzumaki compound. The place wasn't big as the Hayuga or Uchiha estate, but it was around there. Welcome to your new home, Kushina said. As Naruto stepped through the gates, there was no such thing as a Uzumaki compound. This was secretly the Namikaze compound. As Naruto looked at the beautiful place and the giant mansion building that looked like it has so much room inside of it, Naruto then stepped to the front door as he turned the knob but it didn't open. Naruto, the door opened with blood, Kushina said. Naruto nodded as he bit his thumb as small amount of blood dribbled from his hand. As he swiped it on the door and a lot of seal markings appeared as the seal markings started to turn and click into function as it then popped open. As Naruto turned the knob again as the door opened wide. Your father was really good at seals, she said. As Naruto entered and gasped, the place was huge. As he looked all over the place and it had a protective seal inside to make everything stay sturdy and the place was still well furnished. Kushina then entered behind Naruto as she picked up all of the photographs and put them away. As Naruto wonder if his father was in any of those pictures. As they then went up the second floor as they kept on exploring the house. The one on the right is my room, the one on the left is your own. You might want to put some stuff in there. Because we didn't have time, there was only a bed and a closet and a bathroom. Naruto nodded as he walked into his room. As Naruto rested his duffel bag on the ground. God damn, this place is huge, said Kayashi as he looked around. As Shizuka just yipped in excitement. As Kayashi and Shizuka then went to explore the house. Do not go outside guys, Naruto called out. Sure, said Kayashi. As Kushina then entered, come on she said as she held on to Naruto's hand as they went upstairs as it was a big room filled with boxes. As one of the box read, Kushina's clothes, no touchy. As Naruto chuckled, his mother could be childish sometime. So what do you think of the house? She asked. It's perfect, Naruto said, as Kushina roughly is here. Great, now come on, we have to get some kimonos for the festival. And I want to see you ask out your little friend, she said, as Naruto blushed, as he thought about Sara, and the both of them then left as Kushina chuckled. At the kimono shop, Sara was about to purchase her blue flowing kimono, as she then sneezed and wondered who was talking or thinking about her. Back with Naruto, Naruto and Kushina walk into the kimono shop, but as soon as Naruto stepped in, glares were all over him. Naruto lowered his head but then he felt his mother killer intent rising beside him as all of the glares quickly left him. Naruto smirked, mom rule he said as the two headed off as Naruto headed for the male section but he then spot Sara. Sara? Naruto said as Sara stopped when she heard her name. She looked around the shop as she then spotted Naruto. She waved as she walked towards him. Oh, she's cute, said Kushina. So is she the one? As Naruto blushed. Hey Naruto, Sara said as she walked up to him. Are you coming to the spring festival tonight? She asked as Naruto nodded. As Sara then looked at Kushina. Who is this? She said to Naruto. Oh, that's my mom, Naruto said that smile. Ah, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Uzumaki, said Sara with a small bow. It's a pleasure to meet you as well. Sara, was it? As Sara nodded, well, 
the two of you can continue to talk, I'm gonna go find a kimono, said Kushina. As she then turned to Naruto as she whispered the words, do not forget to ask her, as Naruto just blushed a bit. As Naruto and Sara then stood there, as the both of them looked down at the ground, as they didn't know what to say. So, said Naruto starting off, how has your training been going so far? Naruto asked as Sara looked up into Naruto's eyes. Pretty well, I have been learning some new things, some new jutsu, she said, as Naruto smiled. Well, that's good. What about you? Said Sara. Well, I got a summoning contract. Naruto then looked around as he whispered. I also found out that I have a Keke Genkai. As Sara's eyes went wide. That's incredible. You are so gonna kick Gara's ass at the exam, Sara said. So, what's your contract and what's your bloodline? She asked, eager to know, as Naruto smiled. That's for me to know and you to find out at the exams, Naruto said. Sara pouted. As then, an idea came in her head. I know how to get it from you, she said. As she then turned around looking at him very seductively. Please, Naruto, I would be very grateful if you tell me what they are. As she pressed her body up against Naruto's. As Naruto turned nearly 50 shades of red. As he used all of his willpower to say no. Sarita simply grinned. Alright, I guess I'll find out. At the Chunin exam final, she said, as she then stopped, making Naruto let out a sigh of relief. Alright, I'll see you, she said, as she was walking away. Wait, Naruto said. What is it, Naruto? She asked. Well, you see, as Naruto was stuttering at this point. Well, the festival. Pe people are carrying dates. Would you? Of course, she said. As Naruto looked at her and tilted his head. You're asking me out on a date, right? Yeah, kind of, Naruto said, blushing a bit. And I'll go with you, she said. As Naruto then rushed up to her, not knowing what he was doing, gave her a big hug. As he then started to blush like crazy, as she stood there. But she wrapped her arms around him and hugged him back. After a while, they break the hug. I'll meet you. At 7.30, in front of Ichiraku Ramen, said Naruto. Sara nodded with a blush on her face as she left. As Naruto just started yipping excitement as he went over to the man section to get what he was here for. As Naruto was looking through, as he found the perfect one he wanted, as he took it off the rack, as him and Kushina paid for their kimonos, and they headed off. Time skip, 7.30. Sara was waiting in front of Ichiraku Ramen, waiting for Naruto to arrive. As she looked at the time and saw that it was 7.30, he wouldn't stand me up. Wait, I'm just thinking things over too much. It's just 7.30. It's the right time. She then heard a voice calling out her name. Sorry I'm late, said Naruto as he rushed up to her. Not at all, said Sara. As she let out a sigh of relief. As for a moment there, she was starting to worry. As Naruto then looked over Sara's blue kimono with the flower pattern. Beautiful, he thought, as Sara looked over Naruto as well. He's really handsome, she said to herself. You're, you're, what is it, Naruto, she said. You're absolutely gorgeous tonight, Naruto said, making Sara blush like crazy. You're really handsome as well, in your blue suit, she said to him with a smile on her face. All right, said Naruto, as he offered Sara his arm, as she took his arm and the both of them walked off. As they then took part in the festival games, which was one of them to throw kunais. Hey Naruto, said a voice, as Naruto turned to see Shikamaru who called him. And the rest of their friends were there as well. Shikamaru, Ino, Choji, Hinata, Kiba, and Shino, and Sakura, Erashi, and Shinshi, Neji, Tenten, and Ri. Hello guys, Naruto greeted all of them. And Sakura said hello too, in a low tone. So Naruto, who is your girlfriend over there? Ino teased, as Naruto and Sara blushed, to be mentioned as a couple. We're not like that, Naruto and Sara said at the same time. She's my date for the festival, Naruto explained. So, what about you guys, Naruto asked. Well, Ino, Choji and I have to go together, because of our parents, 
Troublesome, said Shikamaru. What about the rest of you? Naruto asked. We came here as a team, so we don't really have dates, said Arashi. So, that means I'm the only one who got a girl, said Naruto, as the group laugh. As they then talked some more until they went off, but Kiba walked up to Naruto before leaving. Hey, at the end of this, make sure you give her a good night kiss, said Kiba, as Naruto blushed thinking about it, as he forced it down so that Sara wouldn't see, but she was busy talking to Sakura. As after that they all went off, as Naruto went with Sara as they enjoyed the festival, playing games all night. After a while, after eating dinner and everything, the games, the festival was over as everyone was going home. As Naruto was walking Sara home, as Naruto had a trophy under his arm. It sure was a fun day today, said Naruto, as Sara giggled. It was wonderful, she said. After a while of walking in comfortable silence, they arrived at Sara's home. As Sara stopped in front of it, as she started to pull on her kimono, as she looked nervous. Is something wrong, Sara? Naruto asked. Naruto's eyes went wide as she answered his question by planting a giant kiss on his lip. As Naruto was too shocked to do anything, as he just enjoyed the kiss. As Sara then pulled away with a huge blush on her face. Want to meet again when we're not training? She asked him as Naruto immediately nodded. Alright, she said as she grinned and left Naruto alone with his thoughts as Naruto walked back home. Back at the Uzumaki slash Namikaze compound, Naruto entered the house. As he saw Kushina sitting on the couch with an angry expression on her face. As she saw Naruto, where have you been young man, I was worried. But Kushina stopped when she saw Naruto's face. What's wrong? She asked him. She kissed me, Naruto said. As Kushina smiled when she heard that. Ah, so she kissed you. And how do you feel? That's the problem. I don't know how I feel, mom. I only met her a couple days ago. And now this. As Kushina ruffled Naruto's hair. Let me guess, you're feeling confused, happy, and have a weird sensation in your stomach. Yeah, exactly, said Naruto. Honey, you love this sour girl, said Kushina. I love her, said Naruto, as he looked at Kushina. Just think about how she makes you feel, different from anyone else, said Kushina. And with that, Naruto went off. Time skip. For the past weeks, Naruto and the rest of the finalists had been training, as Kushina also gave him the scrolls that Jiraiya gave him, as Naruto also trained in his bloodline. As Naruto took focus on one of the scrolls, mostly, as he always had chakra burns on his arm and a spiral pattern in his palm. As Naruto has been spending more time with Sara as well. As Naruto realized that Kushina was right, he loved Sara, and he actually blurted out to Sara on one of their dates. As he was met with a happy kiss on the lips. So time skipped the month is over and it was now time for the finals of the Chunin exams. At the Konoha Arena, the stands were packed with cheering shinobis as they were waiting for the matches to begin. Everyone was there except for Sasuke. As Naruto was puzzled, he expected Sasuke to show up more than anyone else for his match. As Naruto then looked over at Sara, his now girlfriend who smiled at him. Naruto smiled back as he then turned and got serious as he looked at Gara, who had a sick twisted look on his face as he was giving Naruto a sick smile. As the Hokage then spoke, welcome citizens and guests of Konoha he said, looking over to the daimyos who came to watch a match. As he then gave a speech and hand everything over to Genma, as Genma then explained, alright guys, the judges will determine if you are worthy to become a chonin. Now the matches are the same. If you either win by knockout, unconscious or kill, or surrender, then I will declare the match over, he said. So the first match is Arashi versus Shino. These two will remain on the field. The rest of you will go up to the stands in the finalist box. The proctor asked them if they are ready. As the both of them nodded, as he then said begin, as Arashi jumped back as Shino sent his bugs towards Arashi. 
Arashi's speed through hand sign, earth style, golem defender as he slammed his hand on the ground as a golem emerged and blocked the bugs as it then went down into rubbles. As the both of them rushed at each other, as the both of them spar with kunais, Arashi then flipped back as he ran through hand sign and released a giant fireball as Shino sent his bugs. As Arashi smiled, knowing that those bugs are going to be toast, but his eyes went white when the bugs just came out of the fireball. My bugs have the ability to adapt to any kind of situation. Becoming fireproof is one of those, said Shino as he adjusted his shades. Arashi gritted his teeth as he jumped, twisted and flipped to avoid the bugs, while Shino just stood perfectly still with his hands in his pockets. Arashi then pulled out a scroll as he pulled a giant shuriken as he threw it at Shino. As Shino stood there as the bugs protected him. But then, each side of the shuriken, there was paper tags as it exploded. Wow, that was unexpected, Naruto said. As Sara looked over at him. That's all you could say after a huge explosion? Nearly kills one of your friends, Naruto? She said. As Naruto chuckled. Shino may be a quiet guy. But trust me, he's no pushover, said Naruto. That hit him dead on, said Sara. But when the smoke died down, Shino stand in the middle with the bugs swarmed around him, creating some kind of a bug armor. As Naruto smirked, I told you, Naruto said, as he then felt something watching him. As Naruto turned his head to see Gara, just staring at him alone, not even looking at the match. As Gara was basically just digging daggers into Naruto with his eyes as his smile started to twist and turn psychotic. You really want to fight me, huh? said Naruto as he looked at Gara. Gara didn't say anything as he just kept on staring at Naruto. But Naruto then focused his attention to Gara. Don't worry, I want to test you as well, Naruto said as he smirked. But guys, I'm going to be ending this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this, you already know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, turn on that bell notification, stay posted. Remember to share to all of your friends on your social media platform. And yeah, stay in tune for the rest of the what ifs coming over Anime King 2. But for now, I'm out. Peace.